Hello again and uh, welcome to Max Staff Live with uh, myself, Martin Croson, and the Managing Director of Max Staff, Anthony McCormack. Hi, Ant. Good afternoon. Hi, Martin Croson. How are you doing? I'm good. Very good. You? Yeah, excellent. Cheers. Okay, good. This is our fourth uh, live now. And thanks ever so much to everybody that's watched and given us feedback so far on um, mm. on the broadcast we've already done. We really appreciate it. Please keep the comments um, coming in. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast, which is all about winning with a recruiter. Now, call me a cynical ex-journalist, um, but is this broadcast you literally about you coming on and saying that people should use you uh, to help their, their job searching cause? Prove me wrong. <clears throat> no, not really. No. Um, so, you know, there's different kind of shapes and sizes of recruitment companies to suit all candidates, really. It may may or may not be that Max Stuff's the best thing. But uh, yeah, I'm going to argue that, you know, uh, it, it is it is possible to have good results with a recruiter. And it's a, a tool to have in your tool bag, I guess, uh, for your job search, you know, not to be the only thing or uh, to be 100% relied on. But so it's definitely going to open up some options for you. Okay, so nice place to start. How can a recruiter help me as a job hunter? Perfect. Well, I suppose, like, you know, from a, like a uh, stating the obvious point of view, they're going to find new jobs. Um, so, you know, dual um, recruiters r role really is to, you know, place candidates and to fill jobs. So, um, you know, their job shop, if you will. Um, but also, you know, slightly underneath that, I guess they're, they're there to give you help and advice. Um, and uh, improve your chances um, in, you know, your job search um, as a whole, but also, you know, your individual application to, you know, perhaps what what, what might be, uh, you know, your, the perfect or your desired job. Um, so okay. again, a tool to have in your tool bag, um, you know, don't necessarily 100% you know, rely on a, a recruiter, especially not one um, recruiter, but um, definitely it's going to improve your, improve your options, improve your chances. Okay, I, t I totally get that for for an active search. But what about those people who are sort of passively looking for new work? How, can, can a recruiter be any use to them at all? Yeah, it's a good uh, good point. So um, I, I guess kind of looking at it from the customer's point of view, if you like, you you guys, the job job seekers. Um, you know, recruiters can be a bit transactional. So you know, the best time to you know be contacting a recruiter i guess when you're looking for a job like it's you know you're not uh, you're not on just eat if you're not hungry i don't suppose are you but um if you're if you're not in an active um you know job search it is it is good to keep you know connections going with uh, with good recruiters just because um you know they can be your eyes and ears in the market they can you know perhaps flag you know that unmissable opportunity that you wouldn't have liked to have kind of passed you by you know oblivious yeah. sort of thing um you know i use the term career doctor so you know it's just you know somebody that you can check in with you know have a checkup um get some salary advice um you know and um if you're already talking to a recruiter recruiter before you start um your next job search they can you know talk to you and uh, um you know make some improvements about your cv and things like that um mm -hmm. so yeah it, if you keep you know it's about relationships isn't it same as anything if you put a bit of effort into maintaining that contact and that relationship you'll be able to call in favors from each other and um and certainly i i think i'm a useful um contact and, and resource for uh you know candidates that have you know perhaps placed years ago or people that i'm going to place you know years uh, into the future yeah sure I, I mean what about i've got plenty of friends who've said this to me in the past i've never used a recruiter in the past so why do i need one now yeah exactly the it kind of if it broke don't fix it kind of um um saying and yeah absolutely yeah it, it, most most people kind of won't need um you know a, a recruiter to find a, a new position they um you know and you could continue to do the same but i suppose the uh the the main point is that it's not the desperate candidates that might use a recruiter it's it's equally the discerning candidates that would use a recruiter and that's because i guess we've got two main jobs one is to um screen and you know and qualify and sift um candidates for shortlist for a position that's got lots of applications and that's probably more the what people think of and what what you're maybe thinking of but um what we also do is um um screen and and qualify and sift job opportunities for candidates that have a lot of options um yeah so you know again placing candidates as well as filling jobs um so you know if you think about it that um you know let's assume you're a good candidate i'm sure you are um 
you know you you apply to a job you're likely to get it um so but does that mean that you add like a, a proper kind of re review of what op opportunities are best in the marketplace for you kind of not really you just kind of you know ended up the one that uh, kind of um w you know was presented to you or the first one that you applied to sort of thing sure. so yeah. you know just because somebody turns up with a kind of a trench coat on and offers you a kind of really good watch <laughs> you know it doesn't mean <laughs> doesn't mean that you're gonna kind of just um snap his hand off and buy it does it you might you might want to kind of see what else is out there so to speak yeah sure okay i wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say um My recruiters <laughs> Not necessarily recruiters are up there with uh, you know your politicians, estate agents, and journos of this world, but they don't tend to have the best of reputations. If you start talking to a cross section of society, why is that, and why are Mac staff different to that uh, perception? Says the cynical old journalist. Like if, I think you're hardly <laughs> in a position to comment about this. <laughs> I accept it. I take it. <laughs> No, in, in all seriousness, yeah, there's um, you know the good, the bad, and the ugly in recruitment, really. Um, and you know, as an industry, you know, there is elements of poor reputation. I think some of the recruiter bashing is a, a little unfair, but um, I think the stereotype is that is that kind of pressure salesman, the kind of estate agent type person, and um, you know, it is a, it is a an un, essentially unregulated um, industry. Anybody can set up a you know a recruitment company. It's not like setting up a you know a dentist practice or something like that. So yeah. you know, buyer buy beware. Um, you know. The, it is the recruitment industry is a huge industry, though, um, you know, worth billions to the um, economy. Um, and, you know, thinking of REC data and things like that, you know, we can be really proud in what we achieve because um, we've, we're placing as an industry people into a new permanent job every 21 seconds, um, believe it or not. Oh, and there's wow. at any one time, there's like a million um, people under contract for, for, you know, temporary work. And, you know, the gig economy is a massive part of the, um, of the economy. It's, um, you know, people's flexible work choices that's driving a lot of the kind of recruitment industry activity as well it's you know not just people uh, not just an industry that kind of you know leeches a bit off the side sort of thing in yeah. terms of you know in terms of their money um so yeah we provide a valuable um service and uh, you can you know just evidence that while you're doing your research in terms of the recommendations and testimonials and things like that so you know obviously there's the how many stars on google type thing but um mm -hmm. or, you know also um check out the uh, linkedin um company page you know how many followers do they have um how many recommendations does the you know the recruiter you may be considering using have and are they just a good match as well like um there's as i say good recruiters in all different kind of settings like is is the one that you're considering right for you is it the right industry level um you know just personal vibe you mentioned there um about it being an unregulated industry so how how can uh, recruitment companies go on and pr prove to potential clients that and candidates that they are bona fide and that they are trustworthy um yeah and and um all you know all recruitment companies are not uh, are not equal as i say yeah, I, I suppose the the gold standard or the go to check is the rec um, which stands for the recruitment and employment confederation so um you know myself and max staff are individual and corporate members of that and um, you know that does involve every um, two years um taking a you know an industry knowledge and an ethics um test um okay. so that's you know that's a good good place to start um you know it doesn't necessarily guarantee you know like excellent practice i guess by every consultant every um every time um but you know that that's what we have um as an industry so i'd recommend to hook up with a an rec approved um recruitment company i belong to some other organizations as well um you know net, net recruitment networking um uh bodies like um NPA worldwide, um, which is for international and team standing for the Empo employment agents movement. And that's not a quality okay. standard per se, but I would say it's a good guide, um, you know, uh, in that, um, you know, myself and Max staff, we're kind of a reputable, collaborative, um, you know, transparent recruitment company that, um, you know, do a lot of good work and a well referenced, you know, in our peer group, so to speak. So, uh, yeah. yeah, again, it's all part of uh, all part of the research, I would say, if you're thinking of using a recruiter, make it a good one. Yeah, you just mentioned MPA worldwide there, and that's quite interesting as well in terms of whether I should I should uh, engage with a recruiter for a job search because job searches in other countries are, are obviously a very real thing. 
and hooking up with a recruiter who is a member of MPA Worldwide could be a massive benefit, can't it? Yeah, definitely for uh, for candidates if they're you know targeting a job search um, you know in a particular place or even just just worldwide open to opportunities then to speak to. A, a recruitment company that's a partner member of NPA like Max Staff will open up those doors because I can get, um, you know, that that um, individuals, you know, maybe your CV to um, a wider audience of, I think there's um, 600 odd members um, on six continents. Um, so, you know, uh, we can make your profile visible to um, recruitment, good recruitment companies that are um, recruiting in your um, target space um, and in your yeah. um in in your geographical um, destination as well. And just out of interest, Ant, where have you placed uh, jobs abroad? What sort of countries we're looking at? Um, so, yeah. So um, our main main focus, yeah, our main focus is um, is obviously UK and um, and Europe and, and EU, um, and then a particular focus uh, with with Canada um, and you know uh, wider North America as well. I mean, you may or may not kind of um, realise watching that um, you know I've got a. 20 plus year recruitment career but it's roughly split between kind of 10 plus years in the UK and 10 plus years in Canada as well so the okay. you know the original motivation of, of joining NPA worldwide was to kind of just make use of that what is you know what is um you know a USP for myself really and uh, and the connections that we've got over there um I suppose I should kind of just caveat that as well though um you know it's not going to be a guarantee that if a person wants a job in you know x kind of job in x kind of country that that that's a, that's a guaranteed thing it, it tends to be a little bit more job driven like especially in those international searches so a company will say we've got a particular requirement and we, we need somebody with x y and z that's probably um already eligible to work in that country and things like that so you know it'll be it'll be a matter of us kind of screening um you know for the company and the opportunity but um yeah definitely get involved if you're interested in international work um you know drop me a line and uh, and we'll get you hooked up with uh, with the um the online um portal for uh, for mpa worldwide to showcase your skills excellent on what level of entry of job should um uh would make me turn to a recruiter not not only for uh, jobs abroad in canada or, or the eu or whatever but in the uk mm. like is that, is that a fair question so is there a level yeah. where yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I think maybe you, you and different people like um, think that um, you know it's it's recruiters are for more senior positions, and actually, probably other people think the converse that it's for for like, for junior positions as well. And I think the truth is there's you know recruitment companies of all shapes and sizes servicing um, you know job and candidate um, types at all all levels and and sectors really. So you know you might box recruitment companies into four main categories and some people might do or some companies might do more than one um but um temp agencies you know for hourly paid employees in kind of blue collar um and entry level um junior um type positions um okay. then then kind of specialist recruitment companies for one of a better word on permanent um recruitment whereas you're you know directly employed by the uh by the end clients and uh, contract and um, where you might have your own kind of limited um company um you know or act as a sold trader um so Per, permanent temp for the mid to senior and then there's executive search firms who tend to just deal with you know director or c-suite um level uh opportunities and that can be across across disciplines okay what about max staff do you have any uh, areas you specialize in particularly yeah so um you know i i, I think uh, and believe what the gurus say that you know specialist recruitment companies are are kind of better and perform better than kind of generalist ones as a rule so we do have a specialism and um, and that's in the um, professional skilled and technical um, recruitment space um, majoring yeah. on um, permanent placement or or you know per perm jobs and um uh primarily um in the construction uh, engineering and manufacturing type um sectors um i guess looking back to, to last year everybody has to be um agile and go where the, go where the work is you know or, or was. So. Um, <laughs> so i guess we were you know for a short period kind of out or or less in in the construction space and more in certain sectors of manufacturing and again that was like a, a mixed bag of you know obviously aerospace and aviation dead um but like f pharmaceutical and med device like absolutely going crazy so um yeah um we've we've been adaptable but we haven't kind of pivoted entirely and kind of scrapped the original model um professional okay. skilled and technical that's what you can expect from max stuff okay 
I've just uh, just touched back on something you said a few minutes ago about the recruiter and that idea of it being a life doctor. And just touch on the relationship that, between a, a job candidate and a recruiter, how important it, that is, and how important is it for me as that candidate to be as honest yeah. as I possibly can with you to make sure that our relationship uh, is going in the right direction. Yeah, so it is um, a key relationship. I think that that's the right words. Um, you, um, um, your recruiter should be your trusted advisor. You know, they're going to give you the um, the 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 um the guidance and the consultation like a good recruitment consultant will be a, a consultant with a capital c giving you kind of um you know value added advice and so yeah i think um, in return um that definitely kind of be be honest with the uh, the recruiter it's the kind of the the right transparent thing to do and and also you know if there's any if there's any kind of negative aspects then you can kind of help turn those around and not be kind of side swiped up on the back foot so you know if you got fired from your last position or or there's something missing from your cv because you're only there for a few weeks or something like that you may as well yeah. uh, you may as well tell them um and then and then it's just a kind of a adult discussion as to you know what your criteria is like and is that realistic you know in terms of salary you know um aspirations what job that you're interested in going for you know what uh, kind of locations and um and things like that and then um, you know just agree a uh, um a good plan going forward and then um you know expect regular feedback from each other i guess the trust elements are important in any relationship isn't it and i guess especially so in this one we're talking about yeah and it's an important job i, I would say again that you know as, as the our you know rec campaign goes you know we can um you know be proud of um proud of what we're doing and you you don't if you if you max staff's kind of got a mantra hasn't it the mac haven't we the max staff represents um thing and 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 that's what you're getting like it's representation you wouldn't you wouldn't just randomly pick a lawyer would you or pick the cheapest one you'd want somebody who's going to argue your case most effectively and um and and come out with the um, best chance of, of the right result so you know you don't just want anyone representing you you want somebody who's going to a you know do it better than you might do it yourself and uh, yeah. you know and, and b um you know somebody who's, whose opinion is of, of value you know somebody who's got contacts in the industry and can improve your chances of getting the the interview and maybe uh, you know ultimately improve your chances of getting the job and <laughs> improve the value of your offer as well so it's uh, of course, you yeah. know, the, the job search and um and you know and career transitions like really key time and you want the right person kind of walking you through the uh, process for those people that haven't used uh, a recruiter before should you ever should you ever pay a recruiter for their services and you know bluntly how do you guys earn your money um yeah you can pay by credit card here and hit no um <laughs> <laughs> I, I think rule of thumb no and it, pro it probably differs from country to country but um, you know in the uk and everywhere else i've worked it's uh it's kind of not a good practice or required to pay a recruiter i suppose the the um do, and just to let you know as well the, the model works whereby the um employer um pays a normally success only based um introduction fee um when they hire the the right candidate due to our recruitment okay. services and essentially that's in lieu of the you know the work that they don't have to do themselves the advertising that you know money that they don't have to shell out themselves so um you know that's the transaction that's how how max staff and, and other recruiters get paid um the gray area i suppose is when there's um and this is like you know hugely abused as well i think in my opinion but um, when there's other services involved like are you getting cv advice you know that might be something that you pay for you know right. are, are they you know some kind of a career coach or a life coach and in which case you know is that something <laughs> that you you know you subscribe like a monthly payment for or whatever but uh yeah rule let's go with don't <laughs> in short don't yeah what's the value of keeping in touch with a recruiter um after the, i've got a job of my dreams and i think everything's hunky dory and is there some value in making sure i keep in touch with you on a regular-ish basis yeah, I would say so. If it's just, uh, I mean, maybe not daily, but uh, if it's, uh, yeah, if it's a relationship you want to keep, yeah, stay in touch after the um, after the uh, fact. It's always great for the recruiter to know how it's going, um, and you know, to give get the case studies really of how somebody's you know perhaps been placed into an organisation and then you know then gone onwards and upwards really in their career and helps 
you know sometimes transform but you know often improve improve the business and and that's the true value of recruitment long term as well you know not just um you know the the recruiter that transactionally fills a job at you know x level it's what happens after that you know the in- investment and the and the growth of the of the company um and then just from a job seeker um perspective you know of course then they're then they're ready for um you know to help you for next time and um, answer any questions that you might have as you go on through your career journey like you know i've been asked to sign this kind of extra bit to my contract or something like that you know do you come across that what do you think um if um you know somebody's being you know put on consultation or something for a a redundancy or there's a company merger or something like that you might want to check out you know what the uh you know what the recruiter thinks or you know what the what what the word on the grapevine is and just make sure that you're kind of you know ready to to move jobs or as i often suggest not to move jobs, you know, um, you know, depending on your uh, situation changes. And you're always happy to take those calls as a recruiter, are you, from people you've dealt with in the past? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, respect the recruiter's time. They're kind of busy, but but definitely, yeah, it's uh, kind of worth keeping in touch in a, a relationship that's kind of best kind of watered, I suppose, isn't it? Right. I'll, I'll just say at this point, um, folks, if you, if you enjoyed today's broadcast, it would really help us if you could like and subscribe to our YouTube channel down below somewhere. Yes, um, please. It makes, it makes a big help. Um, we're going to be doing more of these in the future, so that'll be your way of uh, keeping up to date with when when they are due. Um, Anthony, a lot of the stuff we've spoken about today is in a book you've written called uh, Job Search, Job Done. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> Yeah, so but, you know, because I'd helped a lot of people one to one, you know, in their in their job search and career transition, I wanted to kind of get it down um, all in one place, um, so that people could have start to finish, um, you know, kind of job search, CV, cover letter, interview, offer, management advice, um, you know, so it'd be a a one stop um shop success manual so to speak and uh, easy for me to say and uh, and that's it <laughs> <laughs> perhaps we better so, practice that line again before I know. next time we come on <laughs> take four um so job search job done available on amazon um it's as a um an ebook um and a, and a paperback so uh, yeah grab it and um small investment but huge upside Okay, great. We've uh, come to the end of today's broadcast. So, Anthony, thank you very much for your time as ever. It's been a pleasure and catch up with you soon. Thanks again. Yeah, likewise. Thanks. And thanks thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks a lot for for tuning in. You can find out more about MacStaff on our website, uh, www.maxstaff.co.uk. We're on social medias, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and Twitter. And, of course, once again, a reminder to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've enjoyed uh, listening in today. We'll be back again soon and keep you updated with when that date may be. But for the time being, thanks once again for joining myself and Anthony. Have a great day and all the best and speak soon. Thanks. All the best. Bye. Cheers.